Welcome to June's Brewing Tips video. This month we're going to talk about how to choose whether to serve bowl tea or gongfu tea. In previous videos we've talked about the different approaches of bowl tea and gongfu tea, the philosophy of bowl tea and gongfu tea, and how they work together. And I encourage you to go back and revisit those videos occasionally and relearn some of those lessons and refine those lessons and renew those lessons. Today we're not going to talk about the differences between bowl tea and gongfu tea, but rather how to go about choosing which one to serve when you have guests coming. And there are several ways that we use in the center to decide whether we want to brew gongfu tea or bowl tea, depending on the session that we're about to serve. The first instrument in choosing whether I'm going to serve bowl tea or gongfu tea is the tea itself. So very often, before I even have a theme for a chashi, or before I even make a decision about whether to serve bowl tea or gongfu tea, I'm going to start with which tea do I want to serve for this session. And part of that's intuitive, of course. I'm going to feel the teas and, and, and talk to them and use my intuition to choose a tea. But beyond intuition, there's also, of course, several factors that go into choosing a tea for a session. And that, that of course, is the season, the weather. We don't want a very cooling yin tea on a day when it's raining. We would probably want a warmer tea that, that makes people feel comfortable. So the weather outside, how the temperature, the humidity, the season of the year, these are all going to play a major role in choosing the tea. And of course, which guests are here, right? And what particular tea is going to suit the occasion. So we also have to look at not only which guests are coming to our tea session, but also the occasion itself. What is the theme of the occasion? Are we coming together to have some conversation and connect to each other? In which case tea is going to take a background role. It's going to help us just to be more relaxed and calm and have a little bit more heart space so that we can have a better, more fluid conversation. That's one kind of tea. Or are we going to have a silent, more meditative tea session? Or, or are we going to focus on, on a particular tea? And all of these will be factors, of course, in choosing tea as well. And then if you know the diet of the people that are coming as your guests because they've been staying with you, that also is an influencing factor and many, many other subtle things. Another aspect of the tea that is being prepared in a particular session that will definitely influence whether we're choosing bowl tea or gongfu tea is of course the quality of that tea. Now gongfu tea obviously has the ability to bring out the best in a tea. Bowl tea, as we've discussed, is more about meditation and ceremony. Gongfu tea brings out the best and brightest in a tea. So if I've decided to prepare a tea that is a very rare treasure, a special tea, above a certain quality, I'm of course going to brew it gongfu tea because those teas that are rare and special and treasured, they should be pre prepared gongfu because many of them, they don't have very many sessions left in the world and when they're gone, they're gone. They're rare teas, they're not reproducible. Many of them are aged. And so every time that they are prepared, part of honoring those rare treasured teas and honoring also all the tea lovers now in the present that won't get a chance to drink those special teas and all the tea lovers in the future that won't have the opportunity to drink those teas. Part of honoring them is to prepare that tea to its highest potential and for that we're going to brew it gong fu. So there's definitely a level of quality above which I will always brew a tea gong fu. Now that level, that line, you're going to have to decide with regards to your own tea collection and your own tea appreciation. For me, there is a line. It's not like a strong, distinct, concrete line that I, that I can see, but I definitely have a feel for which teas should only be prepared gong fu, which teas can be prepared both bowl tea and gong fu, and which teas should ideally be prepared bowl. Just as there are teas that are more suitable to gong fu tea because they're high quality and fine and rare, and we should brew them in a way that brings out their highest potential, there are also very simple teas that actually are so much more enjoyable when they're prepared in a simple way that suits their simplicity. It's almost like we take that simplicity and highlight it. It becomes a treasure. It becomes something to celebrate. Like last month's tea, Stream Enterer, a very simple green tea like that. When you take a simple green tea like that and you put it in a bowl, it becomes something almost extraordinary. It's almost like it is a fine rare tea. 
because it's a fine, rare experience. We've learned to celebrate the ordinary. One of the gifts that T has taught me over time is to celebrate all the ordinary moments in life, to learn to celebrate and treasure the simple, treasure the ordinary, treasure the way the sun comes through the window and dances with the incense smoke, treasure the smile of a beloved friend or the green of a tree or the grass or the sun, facets of which always are illuminating different aspects of things we've, we feel like we've seen many times, but actually in this moment have never really seen. And so learning to celebrate simplicity and make it almost extraordinary is one of the benefits of bull tea. And so when you have certain teas that are very, very simple, they're much more suitable to be leaves in a bowl or just simple bull tea. And drinking them that way really highlights their simplicity and helps you to treasure it. The second important criterion that I will use to decide whether I'm going to prepare tea, bowl tea, or gongfu tea is of course the amount of guests. Number makes a big difference. Gongfu tea is a much more intimate kind of tea brewing. Gongfu tea is much better when you have about five or six people or less. Why? Because a lot of gongfu tea is about maintaining temperature. As we get into more brewing tips videos and they're more specifically oriented towards gongfu tea, we can talk more about that. But suffice it to say, a lot of what goes into gongfu tea is about maintaining the temperature. And we've covered that in many of our magazines, in the gongfu tips and in other articles about why maintaining temperature is so important in gongfu tea because it preserves the patience of the tea and allows the liquor to release itself very slowly. And when you start getting into large groups of people, you have to start making a lot of compromises in your gongfu brewing. You have to switch to using big pitchers. It takes a long time for everybody to get their tea. And by the time they've gotten it, it's cooled down and it's decreased in quality quite a bit. And it's decreased in quality significantly enough that it's almost better to move over to bowl tea. Now, as we've discussed in previous videos, bowl tea is about setting down the discriminatory mind, setting down the qualitative mind, being with tea meditatively, equanimously. It's not too hot, it's not too bitter, it's not too cold. It's just tea, leaves, and water in a meditative state. And so if the quality of the tea is going to be decreased by the amount of people at the gathering to a point where everyone's going to notice that the tea has reduced in quality, then it's better to move to bowl tea. Because in bowl tea, you don't have that problem because people are just meditating and sitting there and it's more of a ceremonial space. So gongfu tea is a much more intimate kind of tea brewing. Small pots, small cups, smaller groups of people is much more enjoyable for gongfu tea. If I have more than six people, I'm going to start thinking bowl tea. I'm going to, for the most part, reserve gongfu tea brewing for smaller, more intimate gatherings of six people or less, unless I'm teaching frankly. If I'm teaching about Kung Fu tea, then I might make some adaptations and brew Kung Fu tea for larger groups of people. But bringing all the cups in, remembering whose cup is whose, warming them, sending them back out is very challenging when you're brewing Kung Fu tea for a large group of people. And it's very challenging to maintain temperature. It's very challenging to maintain a standard of quality that should be there in Kung Fu tea because Kung Fu tea is about refining the brewing process and bringing out the highest potential in the tea. And that becomes very challenging the larger the group gets. The third criterion that I use for deciding whether to brew bowl tea or gongfu tea is, of course, sometimes the theme of the chashi. The theme of the chashi also will play a role in what kind of tea is going to be prepared. If I choose a, ch a chashi based on the season and weather and tea that I've created that is more conducive to bowl tea, I might lean in that direction. And if it's more conducive to gong fu tea, I might lean in that direction. So after other criteria are used, like intuition, choosing the tea, and then I'm still left with a tea that could be prepared gong fu or bowl, and then I look at my gathering, and maybe it's small and intimate, so technically I could prepare bowl tea or gong fu tea, depending on my choice, I might look to the theme of my chashi. Is my chashi themed around something that will be more meditative and ceremonial? Or is my chashi themed more around gong fu and the appreciation of tea? So I look at, in other words, the theme of the gathering. 
what's the theme of the gathering? If the theme of the gathering is the appreciation of tea, then I'm going to lean more towards Gong Fu tea. If the theme of the gathering is meditative silent space, I'm going to lean more towards bowl tea. Of course, Gong Fu tea can pre be prepared in a way that facilitates silent meditative space. And bowl tea can very much facilitate beautiful conversation and connection with other people. So this isn't a matter of Gong Fu tea and bowl tea being separated. Like in all things, they overlap. And oftentimes, you're going to have to use a lot of criteria to decide which one to use. Sometimes uh, you've chosen your tea, and this particular tea could be prepared in both ways. And then you've also looked at your gathering, and it's small and intimate, so you could technically prepare Gong Fu tea or bowl tea. And then you've looked at your theme, and your theme maybe could also be Gong Fu tea or bowl tea. You're going to have to then look at the energy of the gathering and the chashi itself, and sometimes that will help you to decide whether you want to prepare the tea bowl or gong fu, depending on which one suits the theme of your chashi. Sometimes it can be, even be a functional issue. The chashi might have a, a bonsai tree in it or other elements that aren't so suitable to gong fu tea because there's not a place to put the gen shui, for example. And in bowl tea, we can take the gen shui out and then rinse the bowls and then put it away because we don't need it anymore. But in gong fu tea, we need the gen shui out for the whole session. So maybe your chashi doesn't have a space for a gen shui. This is just one example in which the chashi can help define whether we're going to prepare tea, gong fu, or bowl. Besides the tea, the number of people at the gathering, and the chashi, there's one final criterion that definitely is very influential in choosing to serve tea bowl or gong fu, and that final criterion actually streams through all of the previous three, and that's the spirit of the gathering itself. The spirit of the gathering is something that I've mentioned when I was speaking of the, all the first three criterion. The spirit of the gathering is usually the most important criterion for me when I'm deciding whether to prepare tea, bowl tea, or gong fu tea. Now, the spirit of the gathering means that in this tradition, of course, we don't learn how to make tea, we learn how to serve tea. So what tea best serves this occasion? That's the question to start with. What tea best serves this occasion? What is the spirit of this occasion? Am I trying to communicate a sense of ceremony, connection to nature, silence, in which case I'm going to lean towards bowl tea? For the most part, again, these things overlap, so gong fu tea can also do those things. So I might choose a gong fu tea and still try to com communicate that ceremonial aspect of tea. Or am I trying to create a gathering where we can all appreciate tea itself, where we can sip fine oolongs and talk about how beautiful they are? Or am I trying to create a space in which some friends can gather and connect to each other because we haven't seen each other in a while and we need to look in each other's eyes and talk and catch up? And then in, in that case, tea is going to take a background role and it's just going to help us to be more relaxed and connect to each other more easily. And that's going to be a whole different energy than a silent meditative tea session. So the energy of the tea session is really the primary criterion. And this criterion runs all throughout choosing the tea, how many people are going to be there, because the amount of people is definitely going to define the energy of, of the gathering for the most part. Even with large groups, though, technically, you could still ask everyone to be quiet or you could allow them to talk. And then finally, the chashi itself, of course, is going to in part be themed around the spirit of this occasion and celebrating the spirit of this occasion. So the most important criterion that runs through all of them is deciding what I want to communicate. What is it that I'm trying to create? What kind of atmosphere am I trying to create? So rather than asking what it is that I want to create, I should be asking what best suits my guests. How can I serve them? How can I facilitate a greater experience for them? So I should be thinking about my guests. And this is important too. It's not just the quantity of guests you have, but who they are. As I said, when we're choosing the tea for the session, same thing, knowing your guests and knowing what kind of situation they need. They might be better suited by some really nice heartfelt conversation or it might be beneficial to them everyone most people can use a little bit of silent meditative space and they can use the assistance of tea to get into that meditative ceremonial space and hopefully through the tea connect to nature as well which is something that everyone in this modern age we all sorely need
Ultimately, after you have all these criteria and you've, you've made a decision, really the whole thing revolves around back to intuition because of the overlap between the brewing methods, as we've discussed in this month's issue. Really, even understanding the energy and spirit of the gathering and what serves your guests most, you can technically prepare gong fu tea in a way that is ceremonial and meditative. And you can also prepare bowl tea in a way that facilitates the, the brightness of a tea, especially a simple green tea like maize tea, stream enterer, prepared leaves in a bowl, highlights the qualities of that tea. So these things definitely overlap. And so of course, the really the best way forward is to use your experience and your intuition, you know, and to really stand back and take the time to prepare your gathering. Taking the time to prepare your gathering celebrates and respects your guests and it also celebrates and respects the occasion itself. The occasion itself is also worthy of respect. This gathering of these human beings will never happen again in all the earth. Even if we meet here every day and drink the same tea with, with technically the same water, same teaware, it will never really be the same and it will never be the same you or I. So this is why in tea we say one encounter, one chance. And why we want to celebrate our guests to honor them. I want my guests to feel like I honor this occasion. I treasure this time together. I treasure you and I also treasure the, the occasion itself. And so as long as I take the time and put the heart and spirit into choosing the right tea and into choosing the right brewing method and making my chashi to suit the theme of, of what I think best serves this occasion, as long as I do that, my guests will feel it. They might not feel it consciously, but they will definitely feel it. The analogy that works really well for me is to remember holidays when I was young. My sister and my mom and my grandma, they would sometimes spend all day or even two days preparing the meal that we were all going to share when the family came together. And of course, some of the relatives when they would come, they wouldn't know how much energy, how much time and effort and love went into every little detail of that meal. They might not notice that the icing on the cake was hand whipped for 30 minutes or an hour. They might not notice that the baked beans were baked for many hours or that it, they were special beans that somebody had to drive for a little while to get to a special market to buy. They might not know all those details, but they could certainly feel that a lot of love went into the meal. And that was always evident. It was evident even in the fact that sometimes, like all families, there was problems between this aunt and that uncle or between so-and-so and so-and-so. -and -so. But on that day, when we were sharing that meal, all of those problems were set down because everybody was in a heart space because they could feel all the love that went into the meal. So even if they weren't savvy enough or they didn't understand cooking enough to recognize all the little details and all the things that went into that big meal, they could certainly stand back and appreciate that so much heart and love and time went into preparing this beautiful feast. And everyone could definitely feel that. And in this, it's the same with tea. Not all of your guests are going to be able to understand all the subtle themes that are running through your chashi or understand all the work that's gone into cleaning the space and decorating the chashi, choosing bowl tea or kung fu tea. They might not even recognize all of the little details, but they will certainly be able to feel that you've put a lot of your heart and time into making this a special occasion, both out of respect and love for them and out of respect and love for the occasion itself. And so if you do that, if you take the time to follow these criterion or other criterion or your own intuition and actually sit and put a lot of energy into preparing for the tea session, then your guests will definitely be able to feel that and you'll have a much better tea session. So rather than really quickly getting ready for tea abruptly right before people arrive, take the time to actually put your heart and soul into preparing for your guests to come and it will make a huge difference. Like all things in the world, the more you put into it, the more you get out of it. This month's tea is really the perfect tea to have this discussion because it's magnificent prepared gong fu and it's also wonderful prepared in a side handle pot and served into a bowl. So you're going to have to decide if you want to prepare and serve this month's tea gong fu or in a bowl or maybe separate the tin and do a little bit of both. It's going to be up to you. But either way, we hope that you remember that love is changing the world one cup and one bowl at a time.